I'd like to welcome you to the interactive version of Financial Management God's Way. This is the introductory session. In this session, I'll give you an overview of the materials and make some suggestions on how to study my book, Financial Management God's Way. Uh, this, although ideally this is intended for small groups, it can be, this, this interactive version can certainly be used by individuals or couples. Um, even just one person going through it is, is fine. So here's what it's based on. It's based upon my book, Financial Management God's Way. This is a comprehensive study of what the Bible says on finances. There's an introductory session, and then there's uh, 11 sessions of different topics. If you look at the table of contents, it'll show you the, uh, the various topics. I'd like to give you a quick overview of those topics now. The first one is uh, management of money in our relationship with God. Most Christians would believe that how they manage money has no impact on their relationship with God. In other words, their money management and their spirituality are, are two separate and independent things. That's not true. In Luke 16:10, Jesus said, if you've not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, which is money, who will trust you with the true riches? The true riches are things of eternal value, things such as a close relationship with the, with the Lord, leading people to Christ and effective ministry. Christ saying, if you're not trustworthy in managing something of lesser importance, like money, why would God entrust you with something of greater importance, like a close relationship with Him, uh, doing things that have an eternal value to them? Also in Matthew 6, 24, Jesus said, no one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And uh, so it's very important that how we manage money will impact our relationship with God. Let me give you an example. Let's suppose a couple um, inadvertently violate biblical principles. They spend more than they're earning. They accumulate debt. As the debt goes up, inevitably the stress is going to go up. They're going to have sleepless nights. Um, there's going to be off, you know, often stress between husband and wife. And what happens? The focus of their time and energy, instead of being on things of eternal value, such as their relationship with God, rather the focus of their time and energy is going to be on their money problems, their financial problems. And that's how money and material things, if you don't manage them properly, can negatively impact your relationship with Christ. The second topic is God's promises and our stewardship responsibilities. Often Christians, when you talk about the word stewardship, they think he's going to talk about tithing. Tithing is just a very small aspect of stewardship. Stewardship is so much broader than that, biblical stewardship. My definition of biblical stewardship is this. It's when we understand and realize that everything we own comes from the Lord. Psalms 24, 1 and 2 says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And Haggai 2, 8 says, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. When you come to the point of acknowledging in your, your heart and in your mind that God owns absolutely everything, and then you look towards Him, towards the Lord, and say, Lord, how do you want me to manage the money that you've entrusted to me? And that's what stewardship is all about. It's not about the, the, tithe, the 10 percent. Tithing is part of it, but it's actually a very small part of it. It's actually making sure that you're living the lifestyle style that God wants you to live, that you're managing money in general according to His principles and His will. And certainly today, with many people accumulating so much debt, they're not in God's will. And as a result, they're not experiencing the peace of God which transcends all understanding. They're not experiencing that in the area of finances. And I would say this, if you're not experiencing God's peace in the area of finances, then the probabilities are you're not in God's will and you're likely violating biblical principles. So I'd encourage you to work through this interactive uh, study further. To learn more, check out copelandfinancialministries.org.